Hello. Mr. Landsman, how we doing? Mr. Anderson. Oh, great movie. Great, great movie. Oh, Still want to do a movie podcast one day. Pretty high on my list of things I'd like to do. I might be a good foil for that because, as you know, um, <clears throat> my my taste in movies is basically is is the movie good, and that's about it, and that's <laughs> that's as deep as it goes. Did I have fun? So there'd be so we could argue about movies for a long time. I think I grew up on uh, Siskel and Ebert, and they were bit you know the thumbs up or the mm-hmm. thumbs down, like it's good or yeah. bad. That's it. It's a good Not rating easy. system with the thumbs. Very yeah. very understandable. Easy to communicate to the people. Not ten stars, and you're in the middle nope. somewhere. It's like good. Although or bad. they did, they did qualify the thumbs. Sometimes they would say they two thumbs way, way up, and you're like, okay, <laughs> well, you're adding extra modifiers to the thumb system. Yeah, and then actually in Ebert's like written articles, I think it was like a four star system or something like oh, in his written movie reviews. Ebert. Yeah, your system, man. I I gotta be honest couldn't if they walked by me on the street i wouldn't know who they are <laughs> sorry to this man yeah yes. sorry siskel sorry uh, it's a little before R- your R.I.P. Time, one of say. them right isn't one of them yeah, uh, uh, resting in peace no both of them i, I believe both both of them, of them. wow mm-hmm. oh yep good good guys they were I good guess. guys yeah, all we had really on tv know. in the 80s i'd watch siskel and ebert that's what that's what we had siskel and ebert yeah with names like that they had to go together you can't right. just be siskel <laughs> No. You can't you can't be Mr. Siskel and hang out a shingle. You got to be Siskel and Ebert. Uh, the, the the name, yeah, they just work great together, don't they? Works like, great together. Yeah. All right, well, that's, that's a little fun aside. <laughs> a trip down memory lanes. What's going on uh, over there? Nothing. You had a, a trip. Tell us about your trip. Had a trip. Had a big trip. Went down to the went down to the hill country. Um, a little bit. Uh, it was in a town called Bernie. B O E R N E, mm. which is insane way to spell Bernie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like outside of Austin, outside of San Antonio, uh, and it was it was great. Just had the best freaking time. So there were, um, <clears throat> let's see, there were eleven of us, eleven guys. Uh-huh. Um, right. I think we were missing two this year. Um, so it's always a you know. We're we're very rarely at the full thirteen, just given yeah. schedules and everything. Uh, but this year we got eleven, which is awesome, and we do this every year. Um, so it's it's guys from that I went to college with, many of whom were my roommates either in college or after or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so yeah, we go down. Usually we go down to the hill country every year. Uh, it's called Sausage Fest, you know, because we cook a lot of a lot of sausages sure. while we're there. Yeah, uh-huh. that's why we named it that because yeah. of the sausage very, that we cook. Um, very yeah, creative. Very creative. I don't know who came <laughs> up with that, but it was like, hey, since we cook so many sausages, let's call it Sausage Fest. Um, yeah. It was great. We sat in the river. You know, that's basically what we do. We basically go down to the hill country, sit in the river, drink beer, and throw rocks at sticks. That's kind of that's kind of the whole thing. There Just a go. total, like <laughs> total dudes rock moment was we yeah. like, we walked into the river and we're like, Oh man, we should build a little dam here. And so we spent like 45 minutes or an hour wow. building a little dam. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, one guy was like, Hey, what if I, what if I go set up a stick like 30 yards down the river and we throw rocks at it and try to hit it? <laughs> like, yeah, that's awesome. So we spent an hour doing that. Oh man. You know, typical stuff, wow. typical guy stuff. So it was fun. Huh. Now, so I learned something in this because I was always in the impression, like I saw you tweeting about this, whatever, going back and forth with people. Yep. And I always picture Hill Country. Like I was aware yeah. of Hill Country. Okay. And I always thought it was right outside Austin. And it's like that area outside Austin. I think it's what is it like north or something? I have no idea, but it's outside of Austin. But this, mm-hmm. but then on the map, you it was like almost closer to San Antonio. Where it you was. Were. So like, in, is that whole fact, thing was. hill country? Like, I'm just confused. Um, so it's a little bit. It's a little bit of an open question. So um, I'm looking at the map now, so I can get this right. So uh, you've got Austin, and then 
we'll call it down and to the left. Perhaps you could say to the southwest, but we'll you call could, it down and like, to the left. Down you've left, got, yep. yeah. You've got San Antonio. If only there were like commonly understood terms to talk about this. Down <laughs> and to the left is San Antonio. I think anywhere. So um, Hill Country starts. I don't know exactly where it starts, but yeah, like west of Austin, you've got like Marble Falls, definitely Hill Country. Then you go south a little bit, Dripping Springs, definitely Hill Country. Then in uh, Wimberley, you're starting to get in between Austin and San Antonio, but Wimberley is definitely still Hill Country. Bernie might be pushing it considering how far west it is, but even further west than Bernie is Hill Country State Natural Area. And so it's there like, you go. Eh, I feel like it goes pretty far out. Even Garner State Park, which is way out there, that's Hill Country. So... Yeah, it's all kind of west of Austin. Yeah, see, I was always just thinking when you look at a map of Austin, if we go left and up, left and then up, then you have that whole the river, the, some kind of river over there, lakes uh -huh. and rivers and stuff. And Marble I thought Falls, that was yep. hill country, like Lake mm -hmm. Way or whatever this is. Well, the thing like, about countries, the thing about countries is they can be quite large. So the hill country is 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 pretty big. It's bigger than I thought, but Texas it's is a bigger, big place. More so hills. It's oh, it's a big place, man. It's a big place. Such a big place. One time we drove from College Station to California, and half of our journey was spent inside of Texas. Like right. literally, we were like halfway to California, and we were in you know El Paso or something. Yeah, yeah it's that's a big brutal. place. That feels like you're so, just going nowhere when you have those kind of trips where you don't yes cross any lines. Just exactly, like, still going. It's no good. So good weekend, whole lot of you're fun, refreshed. lot lot of yes, very refreshing. A lot of sitting around, a lot of laughing, a lot of talking. One cheese board, which you know I'm saw, sure that you're thrilled uh, about. I'm sure you're thrilled happy. about it. Needed some pickles on there, some some pickled no, vegetables, but nonsense. I still like a good cheese board. There was some salami looking stuff and mm -hmm. some cheese. Several kinds of cheese. There was a cheese that was too funky for me to eat, so I thought you would Ooh, appreciate that. Yeah, there you go. I'd say I'm not some huge on the ultra funky cheese but you know i like some it was just like cheese. blue cheese or something which is yeah. you know gross cool, much. um yeah. but yeah it was it was really great lots of fun known these guys since you know 2006 so and i think this is our maybe 11 no this has got to be our 12th or 13th year of doing this um feel very refreshed That's so pretty good. it was great I don't, I don't really keep up with the college people too much, I have to say. You got to keep high up school, with the college, college people. High school, I've kind of let high school go. I don't really no. talk to any high school people. But college people, I see them, some of them multiple times a week, and all of them at least once mm. a year. See, um, yeah, I've never, but I both, I both never had a roommate and only ever had roommates, which is a little factor what? here too, like, because... <laughs> I've only had, I've never had a room to myself in my whole what? life, okay? I've never had a bedroom to myself. I shared a room okay. with my brother until uh -huh. I moved out, and then I shared a room with my current wife until uh, last night and hopefully yep. future nights. Hopefully, so, yeah. Hopefully more nights to come. But I've never had just like, hey, it's three guys where you share an apartment or whatever, or even a college roommate. Like, didn't have any of that. I was a commuter. No mm -hmm. college roommate. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I never had any of that stuff. So I don't have those missing bonds. Out. Like, I went to college. I had a few, couple good friends in college, but they were also commuters and everybody lives yep. in weird spots now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Everybody's still mostly in Texas of this crew then? or Everybody's in Texas except one uh, one guy's out in California, but he wants to come back. Hell yeah, he does. Uh, he wants <laughs> to come back. I think he's going to land in San Antonio. So we've got, huh. you know, maybe six or seven in Dallas, two or three in Austin, Wimberley. Uh, and then some others scattered about. But I think he's going to land in San Antonio. Well, that makes it easy then. Yeah. Kind of makes it more convenient for everybody when you're trying to organize. I know we do a thing that you attended this year, and I wasn't there, but, you know, mm -hmm. do some stuff with the Laravel crew. And it is difficult to coordinate because it's just like every single person has to fly and just right. orchestrating all that is much more cumbersome. So, yeah, when you can just drive for two days away or whatever. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. It was great. We I drove down... I drove from Dallas, I drove my car, and I drove with one of my friends who is an attorney, so he was, like, working the whole time. <laughs> and so we had texted before, it was like, hey, man, are you driving or flying? And I was like, I don't know, flying, you know, it's a waste. It's going to be the same travel time, but it's going to be so much more yeah. stressful to fly. So mm -hmm. I told him, I'm going to drive, but 
I, you know, I'm looking, I'm super looking forward to like a five hour drive. I just, this feels awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. And he was like, well, how about this? How about we drive together, but I work and you get to enjoy your quiet time. And I was like, that sounds awesome. <laughs> so like five hours down there, he is working the whole time. I think he took one or two calls. I took like weirdly two or three calls. Just like yeah. I called Daniel Colborn. I was like, Hey man, I'm Business driving, I'm driving. And he was like, I'm driving. Let's talk. And so I talked to him for a little bit, um, but it was great. It was so fun. I had my headphones in the whole time, just cruising through the hill country, looking, looking at stuff, just like feel the pressure coming down. Yeah. It's great. Great. Time. Sometimes a, great nice, time. a nice drive, do, do a little audio book or podcast or yep. whatever. And listen to a couple podcasts, talk to a few friends, just had, just had the best time. Should, should we have been lawyers? Oh man. I don't think so. No. I got okay. no, 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 no. So there were three no, there were two two of these guys are attorneys and three of them three or four of them are doctors. Mm. And you know, as adorable as it is to be like, hey, I'm the YouTube guy, I kinda like it <laughs> felt a little bit it felt a little bit better. <laughs> uh, like some of the some of the doctors are still sitting for exams and stuff. And we're like oh, yeah, thirty five no. or six. No, no, no. Doctor's not even in consideration. Okay, so doctor's what, out. Doctor's totally you know, out. Once the attorney... I learned doctors were real people, I was like, Oh, I don't have any injury like I know all kinds of doctors who are horrible, terrible people. I'm like, no, nah, nah, nah. when doctors were superheroes, I might have had some interest in doctors. Yeah. Then you meet some doctors, you're like, no. And then also, yes, yeah, so like, then you really figure out, like, oh, they're just in school until they're like 40 and then they start yes. making money. Like, so yes. yeah, yeah, no doctors. So lawyer, none, none, I'll just, different. On, on the record, none of the my friends are bad doctors. They're all Good. great doctors. Great. I don't they're even mean great. that. Yeah. I don't even mean they're bad doctors. Uh, it's just they're bad people. Not always. You know, they're like any other people. Also, on the bad, record, none of, of my friends good. are bad people. <laughs> So whatever you think is bad about Once doctors, you it's not these some doctors. Some doctors who are not great. You're like, oh man, like the doctor is not great, and all no, the other doctors great. probably all aren't great. great. They're like, all great. That's good. But these attorneys. So one, yes. I will say, I will say, uh, one is in house mm. at a company, and one is at a law yep. firm, and that makes a huge difference. Ooh, okay. Huge, Which huge, huge better? difference. Being in house at a in company house, has yeah, got to be like a better. Nine to five, you're just nine to out. five. You can set up an out of office. You can you can piece out when you're when you're at a firm. It's like, all right, well, got to answer my emails. Got to got to uh, get on that, the phone. I do know some gotta lawyers. Mark up the documents that. or whatever yeah. they do. <laughs> and it's like uh, like I know a lawyer who's a uh, who basically like helps companies restructure when they're going to chapter 11 or whatever thing all that kind yep. of stuff that's what and, this guy is and he's just like yeah they're like you gotta fly over here and like you're working 24 hours a day because like there's a deadline and things are happening and yeah that's just the grind and then that's it and so it does seem much more intense i have some they, known some other lawyers who are like uh, more like the real estate type lawyers i think that's mm -hmm. a pretty good angle like those guys were on vacation all the time like i could see that they were mostly nine to five because there wasn't like this like urgency of like right whatever it's like house closings only happen in business hours and so there right. wasn't like a whole bunch of other stuff going on um but yeah i do think some of these business service type lawyers yeah he's, a little he, bit this different. guy is funny is it specifically a bankruptcy attorney and yeah, so he just <laughs> he just he just works a lot harder he just works yeah. all the time it's like I don't want to do that. So no, that, that, was, that was bad. We are working yeah. all the time now to be. Yeah, fair. I'm working all the time just making less money. So yeah, that's yeah, great. <laughs> I'm a genius. There yeah. you go. You're the genius on YouTube. There you go. Yeah, exactly. So no, we should not have been attorneys and, right. and it's far, it's far too late anyway. So we'll just, we got to keep going then. down this road. Unfortunately, I would have became an attorney actually in you know, probably late forties or something like that. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Not for me. She seemed, she seemed to like it, but I don't know. She was in some weird specialty. I don't have all the details. It was an acquaintance, but yeah, uh, yeah. I don't want to go back to school. That's for sure. I don't no care. way. I couldn't. I couldn't. I just hack read. It. I, I'll read my books for fun. But if somebody makes me read a book, it's like yeah. oh, okay, this yeah. sucks. <laughs> all right. So what else is going on? Oh, uh, where do you want to go? We could we go do... launch week. We could go profit first. I don't know if you know anything about profit first. Um, I haven't read the book, but I'm aware of the concept. It's all kind of right there in the name, huh? You do the profit right first. The yeah, I haven't read I it either, but it seems pretty simple. <laughs> One of the guys I knew who was into it was like, they never did that well at business. So I don't know. Like, I'm not uh... sure what to take from it, but that's only a single data point. 
Uh, you know, in general, I, I think I like the idea. You definitely. Well, what, what's your what's your analysis? Let me, yeah, let me you, set it up. Yeah. Let me set it yeah. up. You can knock it down. So, yeah, right. you know, last podcast, I, we probably were talking about something, and I mentioned I haven't taken any money out of Treherd Studios yet. Right. And mm-hmm. Jesse Hanley, friend of mine, friend of the pod, friend of the community, uh, Very good he guy. runs Bento email service. Great email service. Good job, Jesse. Um, he reached out and he's like, "Oh, dude, you should take money out." I was like, "Yeah, that sounds awesome." And he said, "You need to take. You need to read <laughs> Profit first. And I mm. was like, okay, I've heard of this. Like, what's the what's the deal? And he said that Steve and I need to figure out, like, all right, how much are we going to take out? Let's sit down, have the discussion. How much are we going to get paid? And then just start taking it out. And basically, I assume, let the rest figure itself out. So that's, that's, right. That feels like, you know, without having read the book or even really <laughs> looked into it that much at all, that's kind of what it feels like. You take your profit yeah. out. And then you let the rest of the stuff figure itself out because presumably if you don't, there's no profit left over because it all gets eaten away. So that was his suggestion. He was like, just even if it's a, a little amount, just decide we're going to start pulling money out. It's like, yeah. That sounds kind of nice. So that was it. That was all I had. Yeah. I mean, I think that is the crux of it. I think if you like don't set to me, it's more, I guess like from the tech bootstrapping community, there's always been, that's sort of baked into that mindset to some degree uh, more so than maybe if you're just like starting a more normal business out in the world where you're like, I'm getting a bank loan and like I'm hiring people. And then like, before you know it, like you've used all the money and you have revenue coming in, but you're like, well, I have to hire more people to expand into this and that. And like, there isn't, you know, haven't baked it in so much as it's like so ingrained in your life as most bootstrappers probably Mm -hmm. unhealthily do to some level. But, so yeah, it's like I'm gonna make sure I have X profit. I'm just not gonna hire that other person if there's not money to hire that person and still keep my margin where I want my margin. Um, yeah, I, I do think it's tricky and that like uh, there's like obviously a lot of external factors there, right? Like if you just don't have money coming in or if you have less money than you would like, like you're just factors there that are outside of your control and you kind of have to decide are you going to run the business or not um on some level but Mm -hmm. you guys don't have any outside employees yet either so it's a little bit more straightforward it's like well Mm -hmm. money's just sitting there you don't have many expenses um in terms Mm -hmm. of like servers yeah whatever anything yeah that kind of like business expenses right like you got new computers and you're kind well, of good for the there. record steve got a new computer uh, steve aaron's new computer. just an idiot yeah you're so on your old clunker yeah stuff. we got new computer yeah and then, all right so there's a couple things like that you should get a new computer too you just yeah the latest, fastest like yeah yeah fun. that sounds awesome but then after that you don't have a lot of expenses so yeah so i think short term like I, I definitely think you should take money out like it's not like a lot of upside to keeping money in the business mm-hmm. beyond like your people have different philosophies on this but you know three months worth two months worth four months worth like some amount of expense money but then beyond that yeah i would, I would take it out but um yeah profit first seems yeah, reasonable wish, so are you gonna uh, have yeah, that I conversation wish there was a way like, to to know more about profit first That's, <laughs> what, what can we do what can we possibly There's do to learn do. more i wonder yeah. if they cover these edge cases at all huh? <laughs> we'll never know <laughs> we'll never know <laughs> We will never yeah, know. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to be crass, but I am definitely in it for the money. So that would be great to, yeah. to start getting some of the money out. I would love There's that. There's a, a couple things there too. It's like what, uh, like the profit first stuff. It gets also tricky when you have like. There's my income varies a pretty fair amount to some degree, mm-hmm. and it's like, but I want like continuity in the business. So I could say like, oh man, mm. we hit this threshold. I'm I'm firing somebody because that's just the rule right but it's like or my other choice right is to like well i'll make less money this year and like Mm -hmm. sometimes i have to choose make less money because the there's too much downside of just like firing somebody who was important to the business because i hit some fairly artificial threshold and then now i just have to replace that person next year or in some way so there's like Mm -hmm. you know i think there are these other factors there obviously if you're really tight on the personal income then you won't have a choice and then you have do that but um but the other thing along what you just said is i just read this uh old blog post from john scalzi i don't know if you know who that is he's like a Mm -mm. science fiction writer oh Um, yeah 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 so and it was basically a blog post to other authors to basically saying like don't be 
shy uh, or feel like it's wrong to be in it for the money and uh, hell yeah that's why i'm 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 a writer and i'm in it to get rich like that's my goal and this is what he was already for him. At this point but he's like that's why i'm here i'm here to get rich and um yeah i think that's like a good mindset right to some degree i think obviously in a business scenario it's just more expected um than whereas like people use that against writers it's kind of his point right. of, like you should take a bad mm-hmm. contract to get this deal you should you know it's all do, about the make art these yeah. other trade-offs right it's all about the art um but yeah i think that is something i do think there's some something with that too in our world it's like especially in like b2b software i don't know maybe in other areas it's different maybe in your area it's different but where it's like you know you're making a product that's to help other businesses and but there's not always like an art aspect there's not always like uh i'm literally changing the world i'm redefining yes. technology or um whatever right like it's like no i like it's a good tool it's a useful tool yes. people like it um but is there like the big goal can i invent the big goal around it like it's a little bit harder sometimes these things and then you see people do it cheesily and badly Cheesy. and i don't like yep. that right <laughs> it's like i'm gonna pretend that this app is changing no. the world and that seems no. dumb to me so very dumb yeah so i've always approached it more than like hey like we're gonna have a try to make a good life for myself a good life for my employees yep. create a tool my customers like and that their lives are improved by it but it's also not like the only tool that does this thing or they they their businesses would go under without my software like i don't know there is like it's hard to get to that artificial place for no, me i can, i just i just have no desire to like change the industry or change the world right. just <laughs> yeah. absolutely zero percent oh it's so much to Isn't take on pressure? and you're like i don't know it, you're like wh- why this is this comes back to the fight or win thing like you could fight yeah. the entire industry to be like no videos need to be done this way and stories need to be told this way and it's like yeah. i just i don't i don't i don't have energy for that what i do right. have energy for <laughs> is hopefully changing my world and my family's world and making the best thing that i can make that's yeah. about it i don't yeah. really i'm not gonna fight an entire industry i'm not gonna change the world and that may be depressing to some people, but it's very right. freeing. To me. <laughs> it sounds awesome. To yeah, me. it does cut both ways. I think there's definitely been times over 20 years of building HubSpot that I'm like, oh, like if there was some this other guiding light, like there would be times where maybe that would be motivating, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, that that you could see the appeal of that at times. But then it's like, then you just come back to like, yeah, but is that even fair to put on the business or yourself or all those type yep. of things and um are you really being sincere not that people are always sincere in business but like i don't know i i think i could be that person if i had that kind of thought or idea i was trying to implement but i can't be the fake version of that person no 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 all right so launch week man let's do it launch launch week week so just just to wrap up profit first sorry we haven't read no. the book if we ever if okay. we ever read it <laughs> if we ever read it we'll, we'll give you an update yeah. but that's about yeah. all we got on it I, I think we covered it fully to be honest with you like i think we, <laughs> we've covered it oh, we should do cover. A, a we should do a segment of uh, book reviews for books we haven't read yet <laughs> <laughs> I love a good segment. <laughs> we don't have enough segments on here, and I would we love a segment. We don't have so. enough segments. All right, okay. everybody, All right. Com- comment on Twitter and comment on YouTube <clears> comments <throat> with books we should review without reading them. Yes, and we will please, pick one and next we will week, absolutely and we will review, it. review them in good faith, having yes. not read them. Oh, I love this um, idea. That's a great idea. All right, launch week. Mm. It's launch week. There you go. There's there the big. Go. There's the big announcement. I can't so, believe it. I can't believe it, Ian. Tell me why you can't believe it. <laughs> I just don't understand how you did that many videos. I don't understand how he's edited that many videos. It all has come together very quickly. I know maybe not as quickly as you were hoping, but correct. I'm very impressed with the speed here um, to get it done inside June. Um, yep. Got to. It's amazing. And what what's the actual date you're going to launch here? Thursday? I think Thursday. I think okay. so. If today's 24, that's got to be like... Again, no way to know these things for sure. Um, 27. 27. So we'll launch Thursday the 27th. Um, Okay, so... Yeah, it was a lot. I still have I still have a, a number of videos to do today. Okay. Um, This looks like maybe six or seven that I'm going to try to do today and mm-hmm. tomorrow. Um, Getting my hairs cut on Tuesday. So it's like, oh, gotta... 
we really got to wrap some stuff up here. Yeah, you got to do it before that, right? I know, and I got to I gotta tell my guy, like, listen, uh, you just take a little bit, just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just go just light. clean me up a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so today's Monday, all day, and I'm going to try to finish some of these videos today. Steve has been editing like a madman um, over the weekend, too. So I, you know, I left on Thursday, and so the videos stopped flowing, and so he was able to hopefully catch up. Um, yeah. So I'll try to finish up these videos today, work on the site Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll be ready to launch on Thursday. Um, we have two modules that will be forthcoming. So we're going to save JSON and full text search for post launch, mm -hmm. which okay. I think will be good because that gives us you know more touch points to reach out later, yep. more mini we launches, launch little, more reasons yeah. to email. Exactly. Reason yep. to do actual like early access discount instead of just like fake early mm. access discount. Um, and those are so, those are good ones that people will be interested in. Mm -hmm. and We'll spread like if you do a little trailer video or something like yeah, like exactly. See people getting so hopefully, into that. Hopefully that'll bring some more people back or push some people over the edge. Um, right. Mailing list, the mailing list, man, it's it's a lot bigger than I expected. I'm I'm gonna be honest. What'd, Let's see. What we get to? I don't know if you want to um, share, but. Yeah, I don't mind sharing at all. Let me see. So I'm in Bento. Hey, Jesse. Good good app, Jesse. Good job, Jesse. Um, let's see. High Performance SQLite has... Oh, wait for it. Okay, how many... Okay, here's fun. Here's a fun game. <clears throat> no, don't overshoot it because you'll embarrass me. How <laughs> many people do you think are on the list, Ian? Didn't, I mean, we got an update at one point, didn't we? And I thought it was like... We we did. I'll give 3, you that 000? number. Okay, what was that no, number? No, that number at the time was like sixteen or 1,700. Okay. And that was after DHH, I think. That was, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with... See, I haven't been talking about it as much oh, lately. Oh, uh, no. Okay. So that All hurt right. the number a little bit. Am I going to overshoot? Okay. I'm going to go with 3,500. 48... 88. Oh, oh, wow. That's very good. That's almost 5,000 people. So let's see. That's and, pretty oh, good. We don't know the cost, right? We don't know the cost yet? No, we don't know the cost yet. That's still secret? I don't know if it's secret. I think it's perhaps a, a bit undecided. Mm, okay. So what are you doing? Some conversions over I'm doing, there? I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing some math over here. So All right, like, give, me, give me your math. Give me your numbies. Well, so if we go... I mean, because there'll be more than just the people on the list, right? Sure. So like, I mean, what's a reasonable number? What's the number you, you want to convert? What's, what are you going to be happy with from the mailing list, your conversion rate? I will not be happy with any conversion rate. I'm just after absolute dollars. Yeah. So I, I, I haven't even thought about that intermediate okay. step. Okay. Um, I assume like you want over like six figures would be the minimum yes. you'd be happy with. Okay. Minimum, yes. Um, so I just, just give us 10%. an equation. What are you doing? I okay, said ten percent. So All right. So five hundred. Let's say five hundred people from five hundred people. Convert, give me a price. Go, throw a price in there. Oh, I know you had some different thoughts on this. On if you wanted to go cheaper, more accessible, you wanted to go yep. a little more high end. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm kind of thinking for this. I think cheaper, accessible probably makes sense. Um, that's where I'm leaning. So should do it. Just so I was commit. thinking 199. Okay, all so right. That's, a, that's great. That's a good anchor. Thousand for hundred thousand for you know just if we go say just mailing list, I think it'll be Twitter, so hundred thousand podcast just off tour, the, off the mailing like list, whatever. The Terso people presumably be pushing mm -hmm. it into mm -hmm. their channels. So you know, it, I think there's more opportunity out there than just that, but seems pretty reasonable i mean i don't know if you wanted to go all the way down to 99 i think that 99 is a bit feels, too low feels too cheap to me yeah 99 is um, a bit too low uh, we'll go probably 49 we'll probably do a sticker price game. sticker price of 199 um with because you gotta leave room discount for, or no? for discounts so sticker okay, price discount. 199 right, sticker price um, manufacturer and then, suggested retail is 199 yeah yeah, yeah. msrp is okay. 199 and then there will be like an early access um, and then probably a mailing list thing. So right. most people will probably come in paying, I would say, closer to one forty nine or one thirty nine, right. something, something like, like that. that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sticker price is going to be anchored, I think, at one ninety nine. So that's be seventy five thousand from the mailing list. If if you get ten percent, obviously, if you get more than that, then that's right. really good. Um, 
what about and i think you could get more than that because this is like a list of so. people who signed up for this course so like it's right. not un, like in, recently and yeah. hopefully the price comes in low very and so recently. the yeah very the conversion recently. goes yeah. up and so so yeah i definitely could see yeah i don't think higher percentages out of the question like obviously in other software type industries it's like oh three percent of like final sure. conversion rate is, mm -hmm. is pretty solid but like here i think you should have high, much higher than that so um I think that feels reasonable. Now, what about, I feel like you're missing a little something here and that uh -oh. are you planning on having a second tier? That's like a great upper question. Tier? That's a great question. I don't know yet. I know that that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to put in the upper tier. I have had yeah. a, I've had a hysterical thought where we could just make the exact same content cost more and basically say my employer is paying. So there's like a, one ninety nine and a two ninety nine. Honor and the system. Yeah, the two ninety nine is. Hey, my company is paying. Thanks for all the good work. Uh, and I don't know if that. I don't know if that's ever been um, done. It feels a little silly. I have but seen seems, that. I feel like seems the like more, it could work. The more sort of. Um, I think the, oh, a better way to do that, in, in my opinion, would be to make okay. a team version. Yeah. Where like this course is for one person. If you want to give it to all five of your developers, then there's a team, you know, a multi-licensed discount or mm -hmm. a five user pack or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then so they can properly license the course for their entire yep. team and they get some kind of discount. I think that might be more compelling because then people are required to do it. It's more like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this for my business. I'm buying this for my five devs. I'm going to mm -hmm. license it properly um, versus just like, honor sister in right. systeming it um i think teams will definitely but, be an option yeah like i don't know if that's a tier though that feels like a yeah, different that's a thing tier. altogether that is a different thing altogether uh what about the tier like yeah i mean i guess like obviously you could just hold back con like json and full text search could be a higher tier yeah um is an option i don't know if that's a it is tricky i think this topic's a little weird to maybe break up and a lot of times you see people do it the whole thing, but then there's like workbooks or other types of stuff. I, know. I don't know if you want to get into all that. I, I really don't. And some people will yeah. make like the interviews a, a different like yeah. tier, tier, but I feel icky about having people donate their time and then I sell the content. Um, right. Yeah. I and think they're gotten a lot regardless. of juice out of that. So yeah, like, exactly. Um, I mean, there's I obviously things like time screen. with you. I could you. throw up a coffee shop I mean, tip screen that's like, like that. 18 to 25% tip I on like top, something you know? more compelling, though. I feel like yeah. something more compelling. Mm. I guess you could have, like, since you do have this whole layoff thing, you could have, like, a you with a, like, empty coffee cup, <laughs> like, you go, you really lean <laughs> like into it. shaking the tin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, could, I could do that. Um, um, you could do an, an half an hour with Aaron Francis to answer questions I could, yeah it's gonna be I a could. big time might, commitment might just be there to anchor because i don't super want to do that but like if yeah. i put that at you know a thousand dollars then 199 sure looks cheap next to it doesn't it um right. yeah that's so yeah like i don't a, know 799 for an hour with aaron and mm -hmm. look at your code base for a bit yeah. or something. i really do want to find a tier um but i haven't i haven't found it yet Oh, okay. Here's an outside Tell the me. box idea for yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, <laughs> we're going to talk live about this. I don't know if this okay. is Okay. Um, what if you go back to Terso? Yeah. And you say, Hate it already, give me but something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Give me something to put in here as a second tier. So, uh -huh. like, you buy the higher tier and you're getting four months of Terso for cheap uh -huh. or free or whatever. And it's like, but, and it's less. Um, you know, they're saving money by buying it through you effectively. Okay. And Terso's getting a direct lead that's mm -hmm. like actually going to convert for sure right away and start using their service. And it gives you like a little extra revenue there. Okay. I, you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's a little bundling. It's more of a bundle. It's a little bundling. A tier, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. something it's not like bad. that. I can see that. I can see the people you're working with in terms of the brands liking a more direct conversion option right. other than just their mm -hmm. name is on stuff it's like they would like to probably have like and then the person instantly signs up when they buy this tier and they just yeah. in there um, we're gonna have we're gonna have some of the data be available in terso so you can like mm. if you want to follow mm. along with this video sign up 
through this link and the data will be in your account and you can oh, do some cool. queries there. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Right, so that's hopefully that's gonna that's a good idea. Hopefully that's gonna bridge the gap between course people and Churso yeah. customers. Yep. That's the goal. All right. I like um, that. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm really I'm really hoping really hoping that our floor is a hundred thousand. That is my hope. Yeah. Because which is, you know, just a massive amount of money, but you also have to remember Steve and I, two Not people much money. have been working on this full time yeah. <laughs> for what? Two months now, three? Yeah. And it's like, oh, uh, when you when you do it across a couple months and a couple people, it sure gets d- divvied up pretty quickly. Yeah. And it's not, it's like, what would you guys be making if you went and got jobs, right? So it's like, because yeah. I can imagine some people be like, oh, $100,000 for two months isn't bad. But yeah, it's two people. And if they had their, you know, experienced, well-respected people who could make a lot of money yep. in a job. And so... It has to be enough obviously this one thing on its own doesn't have to be enough to pay for that right. same level but it has to be a good solid step in that direction yes um, so yeah so i would think yeah and this is this is the beginning the, like to to lessen the expectations a little bit on my side this mm. is the beginning of the empire yes. and so this is not this is not the last time that the SQLite course is going to make money. Like right. it'll make most of its money on launch, but presumably it's a long-term durable asset that we will continue to surround with other long-term durable assets. So Postgres course, MySQL course, and hopefully there's some, you know, there's some synergies there when we start uh, putting all of the things together. When we become database school, Hopefully, people will come there and buy one or many courses, but we become that destination. So, you know, hopefully it makes a ton of money on day one, but I have to remind myself, this is a long-term game, and this is the first brick in the wall. Yeah, and I mean, I think for you guys, figuring that part out seems super critical in terms of whether or not it's like database school and people buy for all these databases, because a lot of times people are only in one database, but Mm -hmm. even still, like keeping that so that there's a pretty constant flow of customers like i feel like that's going to be super important to make this really work so definitely i think so i think approach yeah you you don't want it to really be the traditional course launch and then Mm -hmm. there's not much money after that i mean obviously there'll be a nice like initial injection but you you really want to find a way to make it ongoing i think and like by releasing new stuff and also it's the perfect content for it because like it's not, it's not changing that often. It's changing way less Correct. than like Laravel's changing or whatever. Yes. So it's like, yeah, okay. When when SQLite does some big new change, you can like do a new module on it and yep. remarket it all and all that stuff. Yep. And for the next year, you can be working deals with who knows who. I don't know different providers or even things, mm-hmm. um, other training sites or whatever uh, other service providers, and like getting this content out there in other ways keep talking yep. about it coming keep up with like a schedule where you're regularly talking about it and doing new youtube videos yep. i think and the the database school stuff. podcast will continue i feel like that has been oh uh, yeah you that's know it idea. started as just like hey let's do a little bit of hype for the course and now i think oh this is this is a good marketing channel i mean yeah, i like that the fact that like i mean we know we know podcast numbers i put some of these pod these podcasts on youtube and they get fifteen thousand views and i'm like what oh. What what's going on? Yeah. Um. So I think that's a pretty good long term asset. Um. That will help you know market the entire the entire idea. And so when yep. you know when Postgres comes along, we slot in some Postgres interviews, and it's like yep. everybody. It's databases. It's still interesting. So yeah, I think that'll help. Um. But yeah, turning it from like you know we we have to do things one at a time. The first yep. thing we have to do is launch the course, but then yep. shortly thereafter, we got to turn it into like a business. And yeah. there's a huge difference between launching a course and running a business. And I yeah. think we got to figure out, all right, how do we run a, an education business? And even like the thing, like the database sort of interviews, it's like you've been kind of going to like real kind of people deep in the architecture part of it and things like that. But you could imagine like, hey, let me just interview people who are heavy SQLite users and high performance installations. Or like you, yes. there's a lot of people out there and every time Correct. those interview shows are popular for podcasts because 
it's much easier to bring an audience that way because sure is. they're yep. bringing in their people and um, mm -hmm. you don't have to generate it all from zero. So I really like that idea of making that a very regular yeah, thing. This, this most recent one was Kent C. Dodds, who's not a database guy, mm. but has been very public and vocal about moving from Postgres to SQLite um, because of some of the things it gets him. And I feel like that's a good like that changes it up a little bit. That's kind of more yeah. in the vein of DHH, honestly, where it's like, right. you're not a, you're not a database guy. You're just a good developer who has touched the database a lot versus yeah. somebody like, you know, Ben Johnson, who was the light stream light FS guy. Who's like, yeah. Oh no, I'm in the internals. And right. so I'm, I'm yeah, in Ke keeping it, keeping it approachable, I think is important, which is part of, I think one of my, my strengths is I'm not yeah. a DBA. And so right. even even when the esoteric stuff hits, I'm still, you know, the voice of the the noob to be like, wait, what are you talking about? So So what do you think going. about this then? Because so Here we I, go. I really like this idea. I think it's a great idea. I think it's like uh, like a really great marketing channel. Okay. Um but then I start to get worried about things yeah. like the Aaron Francis variety hour you talked about last week. Right? Oh, it's like, a great idea. It's a great but, idea. But you can only it's have so idea. much Aaron Francis time. And can you? You can. And how much of that Aaron Francis time can be dedicated to other th this podcast, which is not you know totally on point of, of like making money necessarily? It's, it's the, it's the brand extension of all the though. things. Yeah, it's brand extension. Okay, so is the concern from uh, my point of view, like I mm. don't, I only have so much time, or is the concern from dilution, brand dilution point of view? Not brand dilution so much. I think that part is is fine. But I think okay. like in terms of if you're building additional courses, you're uh -huh. doing yeah different, you know, multiple podcasts and shows mm -hmm. and like just balancing all that in regard to also then building the business part out. Now you have yep. a partner, which is very helpful in that regard. It's, um, so it's not all on helpful. you. Yeah. But um, you know, like the try hard, the try hard era, as we talked about last week, can, it's, it's can only us. go so long. It's upon us. Um, okay, so <clears throat> yes, and concern noted, understood. Mm. I think part of part of our underlying thesis of the business is uh, I have people's attention, yeah, and that is our top of funnel. And so, yes. getting that. getting myself out there is most most likely a net good for the business yeah. for the bottom line um yeah. to the question of time fully agree because right now i'm just like a hundred percent focused on this course and i would literally be rather be doing anything else now <laughs> like i'm just so <laughs> tired of working on this course yeah gotta refresh um, the creative juices yeah, so i think like we talked about a little bit last week you know, it's many small bets, unless you hate small bets, in which case it's one big bet. Um, <laughs> but I do kind of like that aspect of it, where it's like, mm. some of this stuff has and has a finish line. And so yeah. I can work on this course super hard for a while, and then put it down and work on something else and then put it down and work on something else. I think the trick for me is going to be continuing to keep the plates spinning even if it's not my main, like my main focus. Yeah. And that, I feel like that is going to be, that's going to be the trick. Like keeping the SQLite course selling while I'm doing a super happy, terrific, uh, fun hour on Fridays, you know? Right. Like I got to keep, I got to keep the course going. Yeah. Um, but there's some, like there's some shape of the work where it is like uh, the work itself has like a fat head and a long tail right you got to do a huge mm. amount of work up front and then over time you just got to continue to keep the thing in motion and so keeping the thing in motion is going to be pretty important but i don't know i think i thrive on being able to do many things i really don't want to just focus on you know a single SaaS or a single course for the next no. five years i just don't want to do that so so that's interesting because I definitely tend to feel that way myself. But then also what business has taught me is like, you can also just sell the same product for 20 years. And like, it's pretty much the same product that was 20 years ago with, you know, that's not, you know, there's been stuff added and whatnot, but like, and then every time I try to do something different, it's not like as good. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There is that but this sort is, of thing. This is different because this it's is more, 
it's more like, and this is the one sort big of. bet. Yeah, it's the one big bet that is many small bets. Like when yeah. you created, uh, what was the survey one you created? Thermostat. Thermostat. That is like fundamentally different. It's a fully right. new SaaS that you mm -hmm. created. One, yeah. SaaS is super hard. Just super so hard. freaking hard. SaaS the worst. And then it's not It's not like totally adjacent. I guess it's somewhat adjacent to support yeah, that. Somewhat, it's, but, but it's not, not totally. Yeah. yeah. I feel like what but... I'm doing is um I feel like my my big bet mm -hmm. is uh attention slash distribution. Like I have distribution. Right. And along the way I can um do things to capitalize on that distribution and yeah. it's not starting from scratch. Like it's not yeah. starting from zero. I think if I were to start a SaaS right now, that would be that would be more i would be more concerned yeah, yeah. about yeah, pulling myself that. away do from that. the yeah. I'm, not doing that. I'm not freaking doing that yeah, Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah. you got too much going on to be starting a sass only crazy people yeah no, i totally agree with that um i think the thing more more it's just like to make sure you keep selling this course because you put yes. a lot of work into it it's i'm sure going to be very good right and it's, it's like everybody good. makes this mistake i feel like of like then yes. they're done with it and they made the money correct now they're moving on but like or even like forget my stuff right like Laracast right like mm -hmm. Jeffrey's selling he's adding stuff but like a lot of the value is like I go in there and there's all kinds of stuff from two years ago or three years yep. ago and like I'm still accessing it and so that this would be an interesting area to maybe augment yourself with somebody whose job it is to just do that part because that part is mm. really a lot about like making sure you're correctly monetizing this attention you have right. and you don't have to yes. be the one to do that. Like somebody to manage the mailing list and make sure there's new drip yes. campaigns that aren't just lazily done. Cause you don't have a lot of time to three messages, but they go out, whatever it's two years and 15 right. emails. Right? right. And, uh, all those things that somebody else could be doing and doesn't need you to do. Um, that's going to probably pay for themselves fairly quickly i might imagine um so that might be something to consider once the coffers you, you know are what i want fuller you know what i want ian what do you want i want i want like an office manager you know how in every like you walk into a title company right. or a law firm or yeah. a dentist's office mm. and there's there's a linda there's like right. a linda that's sitting there and the office there. the office does not operate without linda Right, because Linda knows all. It's a key she player. knows everything. Yeah. She's been doing it for forty years. Yeah. Everyone else is an idiot, and they all come right. to Linda because she knows how to do everything. Yep. That's what I want. I just want. Yeah. I just want. I think that's maybe like a chief of staff or a, uh, you know, a, I don't think it's personal assistant. <laughs> that's different. Executive assistants be the <laughs> closest. But I want. I want that. I just want somebody to basically project manage the whole thing. That's what I want. And it's just very, very difficult to find. I had that at the property tax company. She wasn't an old woman. She was our age. And she was just <laughs> ruthlessly efficient and didn't get like caught up in the emotional like, oh, what is this? What does this work say about me? It's just like, okay, yeah. I'll do the job. I'm going to do the job really good and fast and go home. And I was like, yes, I love you. Yeah. I mean, somebody like that. I could, For you guys, I almost feel like you could go with somebody more um just even more direct like just a pure marketer yeah like just a pure marketer because like you guys but are organizing what am I the other doing stuff if not marketing that should be my job <clears> right <throat> no 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 because you are out the, you're the, the tip of the sword right like right. you are bringing in people onto the lists onto okay. the subscribers right all that stuff but you i think especially with everything you've said you plan on doing yeah like, it, like just your stuff, but it also like the courses and all stuff like you need somebody to follow behind you and do all the stuff that should be done behind that. Like, okay. Like, okay. Email I lists, see. like so posting say... social media from mm -hmm. the try hard mm -hmm. account, like, okay. Uh, taking quotes and things that people say nice mm -hmm. things about you and then doing something with that, that you are never going to probably really utilize mm -hmm. fully because you're building the next course or you're doing all those things like i'm out you're there creating a spectacle off. yeah you are throwing off all kinds of stuff and it's unlikely i think that you are going to be the one who's able to like catch all that stuff 
or people and contacts right. and whatever and then optimize those where i feel like that could just be somebody's job to do that mm -hmm. like not necessarily even a full time like it could be 20 hours a week to start or whatever like not necessarily a full-time job i mean i mm -hmm. think it probably could be but even if it's not realistic to have a full-time person to start like i think that that's a thing i feel like that mm. just will pay for itself instantly i don't see how it could not be a profitable so endeavor you're, you're somebody saying thinking about i need that. I need like a marketing executioner. Yeah, That's how, like a marketing ex yeah. executioner's a bad. Marketing, <laughs> yeah. marketing manager. You know, there's different mm -hmm. titles and they all it's kind of different. To, different to companies, gather but... to gather all the digital detritus and put it to good use instead of just yeah, letting exactly. it float into and the, the wind. The marketing manager is not usually the person who's out there creating the buzz directly. Right. Like they are whatever is doing that something is doing that and then the mm -hmm. average you know in a bigger company there's an advertising department that's doing that right or whatever right and then mm -hmm. the marketing managers are going to take all that inbound leads and however you want to think about that and then do something with those whether it's following up with them uh, you know, automated for your price point of item it's probably gonna be more like automated and hmm posting on linkedin which you don't like who wants to do that like somebody could be Not posting me. there and managing the pages on the different sites to make sure everything's up to date and blah blah, blah. like this, this is interesting you have enough stuff there to pull that off all right if you are listening and you think i could do that job just will you just let me know will you reach out to me and let me know you, yeah you think you can do that job i would be interested to hear about yeah, that or even I think people you're right. who've I, done it would be interesting to get their take on it too yeah i think you're right because one thing i super do enjoy is being out there and you know creating a spectacle and i'm i think i'm good i think i'm good <laughs> you're at, good at that. that i'm, I'm good yeah. at creating a spectacle that's where that you're is providing strong, value yes yes that is great value um but yeah keeping the the maintenance and the like blocking and tackling not not as good at that not yeah, that's not the that. fun part i've never been very good at that part. that's not my fun part and then it's like nope you have these five thousand names on this list like some percentage of these people are going to be interested in the next course and how are you going to are you transitioning them or is it yep. one whole list or how are you managing that but you should probably tag these people as they came in on the sequel light blah, mm -hmm. blah, and like yeah there's just a bunch of stuff you could do there and some emails go to everybody and some emails go to only sequel light and mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff if you're going to do just, that all correctly yeah there's a lot of stuff and somebody else who's job is to think about that stuff means you don't have to think about that stuff and you could be out making a spectacle which is man what you, you know what i love not doing is thinking about stuff i, hate God, I just stuff. i hate thinking about stuff i'm just <laughs> you like be a monkey on YouTube. i don't want to like, think about yeah. stuff i just no. want to i just want to do stuff i don't want to think about stuff because then you get into the like the whole get into the whole brain and you're like oh man it's, it's weird in here don't want to think about it i just <laughs> want to do stressful it stressful over there it's stressful or, or, i just or want to it's think boring. with my hands yes some of it's boring over there it's like oh, there's a bunch of boring stuff to do over here and then so, you start thinking i got four kids i gotta go to college i can't be thinking what am right. i thinking for i can't be in here it's too scary in here i mean i don't know maybe it's like steve could do that stuff like i i don't know the whole the I don't know if I have the full picture of the whole intricate details of everybody's relationship, but yeah. And what you've all thought about that. But I mean, if you're, if you're out there turning out a lot of video, presumably Steve's pretty busy. Also Steve's pretty busy. The other side of that. Yeah. Um, Steve's very busy. And especially if you guys get into more, like you've already done a little bit of with like things that are animated or, mm -hmm. you know, take yeah, it that, up a that, notch I mean, in quality. Like that takes poor, more time on his end. Guy. One animation, <laughs> one, one video that has animation could take him if he's working on it only it could take him three days to do a right. video with animation it's like yeah. good gosh yeah so that's a lot of work just there, why it looks so, so good <laughs> right right, right. Uh, that, there's the upside of that um, yeah so all right hmm, like this it. is interesting this is interesting okay i will take this under consideration yeah, if you just, if you've listened to this and you think i have experience uh, in managing those people or i have been that person do let me know let let me know, uh, Aaron D. Francis on Twitter. Send me send me an old DM. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll we will continue to talk about how to turn a course or a collection of courses into an empire because that is the goal, and I think we can do it. I, I think, think so. we can do it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's also a lot of like prior art out there. You can start to dig into more of like right. What did these other, you know educational platforms do in right. early days and mm -hmm. so on and so forth but 
I mean, Kent C. Um, Dodds is hiring people left and right for his education platform. What's he do? I don't. I don't really. I've heard the name, but I don't really know what he does. Oh, uh, he's a JavaScript guy, but he's one of the mm. good ones. Okay. Um, and he has a, a a a framework called Epic Web, but it's mm. like um, it's in the JavaScript style. So it's like a collection of packages that he of has stuff. vetted and decided. Yeah, and so um, the Epic Stack maybe is what it's called. The Epic Stack mm. also has a corresponding mm. like Epic Web training. And he's been uh, an education. He's been an educator for forever, um, right. but he's got an Epic Web training, and now he's got other people inside of Epic Web doing like a course on Git and a course on Tailwind, and so he's mm. he's kind of like expanding his scope as well. Um, and he he that's he's actually a perfect uh, person to bring up because I feel like in many ways Kent and I are aligned, and if I could have if I could follow in his footsteps, but in like a different kind of area or genre, mm. I would, that would, I would be pretty happy with that. That would be pretty great. Um, path. Cause I feel like he's done a good job of, you know, being out there capitalizing on social media without losing his soul and also having a pretty good <laughs> empire. And I'm like, yeah, I could, I could be kept. That would be spot. Good. Yeah. That's a good spot. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. lose my soul. That's for sure. <laughs> Not bad. That would be bad. That's bad. That's bad, bad, bad. You <laughs> only get one of those. You can't get it back, yeah. man. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, so launch week, you'll, also, you'll let us know next week how launch week goes. I'm excited yep. to hear the follow-up of how how the the first day or two goes and on the weekend. Um, yep. All right. Let's do one more. Uh, I'm going to skip do one this more. one I have here. Let's go technical. We haven't done technical in so long. Oh, in a wow. a long yeah. time. We've the been barely the podcast, technical. The arc of the podcast is long, <laughs> and we're not bending towards mostly technical, I must admit. <laughs> uh, that's all right. You know, we have a little stuff to program. We haven't done technical yeah. in a long time. So. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right, so I have a problem. This is where Jennifer turns off the podcast, by the way. Yes, so we, thanks for listening. I'll see you at, at home, the babe. End. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same with my wife. She's like, oh, when you guys get technical. <laughs> oh, like, We're bye, never te- when do we get technical? We haven't been technical <laughs> in months. Like, We've been interviewing people. Oh, we've done all stuff. We haven't been oh, technical of, in months. Mm. Speaking of, big topic at Sausage Fest was HVAC. Ooh. And all of all <laughs> yes. of the bros, all of those very yeah. smart genius brothers. Lawyers. Totally, doctors. totally on my side. Totally oh, on my it. side. No and way. One, Nobody okay, believes that. One one guy, one guy there. Mm. I don't know what he does. Sorry, Thomas. He's got like a PhD, literally a PhD in uh, some sort of like thermomechanical engineering or HVAC. Sure. Or just call it HVAC. And he was like, uh-huh. yeah, that makes sense to me. So, yes. <laughs> I feel like I should have been invited to Sausage Fest. To oh, the you other would have side killed here. at Sausage yeah, Fest, Ian. You yeah. would have killed. They would have loved it. I don't know. Unfortunately, no outsiders have ever been invited. But had you married one of our friends, you would have been then invited. I you can marry him. <laughs> yeah, you can, can marry him. But I think it's a little late for you. Also, there are oh, no man. friends left to get married. So it's like, ah. So anyway, HVAC, great topic. Definitely I don't know. Bring it up I think this boys. is just showing how the like the texas elites and oh. uh the texas elites are detached from reality all the doctors is what and I'll take lawyers this. and yeah, all these one youtuber get together and we're all the elites. fancy yeah. educations <laughs> overthinking these simple household yeah. to do items for sure for sure yep. for sure so there there's our hvac follow-up so chris morell we got four episodes in a row three whatever it is um all right hit us with this last all topic right. ian so, technical yeah, I haven't even. I've only started thinking about this, so the, the, there's a lot of caveats. I'm gonna skip all of those because they're not fun. But let's just say mm. I want to build a, a service that yeah. supports help spot. Okay. Okay. And mm-hmm. basically, what it's in my what it's gonna be primarily doing initially is managing the AI connections for AI features in help spot. And okay. so. Mm-hmm. All the HelpSpot installs out there, both uh, uh, cloud yeah. installed, but also on premise. Right, right, right. They're going to be connecting to the service when they have to do something with AI. Sure. And then that service is going to manage the connections out to AI okay. providers and then okay. get the results and return that back to the HelpSpot that called it. Love it. Um, and I, we can even get into why I would want to do it this way, but even that is somewhat less interesting to me than like, if you were going to build a service like this, like it has sure. to be super fast, 
right? Gotta because be. it's going to be a proxy between these other services and the AI right. services are already a little bit slow sometimes. So I really don't want to add a bunch of overhead in the middle there, yep. but it's got to do some stuff. It's got to like authenticate that this, you know, via some key that this is a valid request from a sure. licensed help spot. It's got to, if we have any usage limit E types of stuff, it's mm-hmm, got to mm-hmm, take mm-hmm. care of that. Um, it's got to, um, you know, log that this was done and what usage there was if we want to okay. charge on different things there mm-hmm. it's got to then obviously do the http connections and all that stuff all right so it might also you know have some logic I'm, i would like to keep it fairly thin but i think there's going to be a chunk of logic in there about like maybe there's gonna be different ai services for different types yep. of requests uh-huh. based on what you're trying to do or different uh definitely for sure different models uh, at least in cost structure of like this sure. is a simple thing we're going to send it to the cheap model this is a this thing's writing something complicated we're going to send the expense model whatever so where would you start on the infrastructure mm. part of this like how would you think about that okay so i'll give you i'll give you two answers mm. if i wasn't if it wasn't ai so this is the mm. answer that doesn't matter but it's okay. uh i just well, want to hear right. myself talk Some yeah context so yeah. if it wasn't ai and i needed this sounds you know, you hate to say the M word, but it sounds kind of like a microservice. It really right. does. You, you hate to say like it. That. You hate to. Yeah, I, do, um, I do hate to say it. I, and I was in, I was in your situation where people could have stuff on-prem or in cloud. I would probably put it, I would probably do a full Laravel application. I wouldn't go, mm-hmm. I wouldn't reach for some, some water down. No, 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 no. This is where um, I was leaning. Mm-hmm. Nope. <clears throat> I would. Um go full Laravel application running Octane on fly.io deployed to five or six different Mm. regions. That's that's what I would do for a service that needed super fast response time Mm. um, and had to be near. So I think one of your, not a problem, one of your realities is these servers could be anywhere because it's on-prem, right? right? And so you can't necessarily control for the fact that like, well, everybody's connecting through Virginia anyway, so we can just put it next to Virginia. Like, eh, Mm. not true. So I have done, I have done this exact thing with um, uh, a service that I deployed on Fly.io in like five or six different regions running Octane, which keeps, keeps, you know, shaves off whatever, 50, 100 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Um, and importantly, this may actually play a factor. Importantly, when you're running Octane, you can keep uh, HTTP connections open, not to the client, but to whatever third-party services you're calling. Mm. So then you can shave off the connection time between you and OpenAI. You shave off like the renegotiating HTTPS, mm. establishing a connection, yeah. all of that stuff. Um, right. So you could keep that connection open and save another sometimes 50 milliseconds. So you're already saving a bunch of time there. I wonder how so open AI and those guys feel about that. Do they care know. about that? I don't, I don't know. know. There's, techni- there's technical answers to that. I think they could hang yeah. up if they wanted to. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And if, if they do hang up on their side, then Guzzle will then renegotiate it on our side. So it's totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's one. However, yeah. however. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, let I'm me gonna... add one, one little point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. most... Well, no, you're 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 right. I mean, there's basically two cloud locations we run: an EU and a US. Okay. Um, so two data centers. Yep. And then the other on-prem could be anywhere. All right. Uh, mostly they're US uh, and Europe, but mm-hmm. it could be anywhere. Um, and there will be some like when people buy stuff in the store mm-hmm. or whatever, like this system's got to be aware of those sort of changes. So it'll have to be distributed out, presumably to okay. something that stores that data local. Cause we don't want to have to check back with this one sure. like, server all the time. So a mm-hmm. couple other bits of context there, but anyway, Mo- okay. and three quarters of the customers are cloud. So they will be in okay. one of two data centers, mm-hmm. but there are big customers um, on premise. So, so now I'm going to give you option two. All right. Give me option two. And you're going to like this one a lot better. Okay, let's hear it. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk your book a little bit. Ooh. I think, I think you got to go Cloudflare with this. Oh, okay. I've thought about I think this you, a little I bit. Think you just, I think this is not a Laravel application at all. Right. I think you go Cloudflare. I don't know the full extent of Cloudflare's AI offerings, but I know they, they are legion, which is to mm. say they are many. Oh. Um, so I think, I think this is a Cloudflare worker. I think this is a Cloudflare worker 
that connects to their, I think they do some of this uh, AI model aggregation stuff at their layer. And so you can just swap out a string and be like uh, GPT-40 or Cloud 3.5 or whatever. Right. Um, and they're, you know, they're region earth. So it's like, they're going to be everywhere. The worker is going to be everywhere. It's going to be fast. Presumably you're putting a lot of stuff on Cloudflare already. Yeah. I think this is a Cloudflare worker. I have thought that too. Um, I guess my my issue with Cloudflare Worker mm -hmm. is one like we you know we don't really have the JavaScript uh, writing experience in house, so we have okay. to learn it. It's not going to be a crazy complicated app, so it's not the end of the world most mm -hmm. likely. I do love the idea of it just being out there in the worker. That will be absolutely the fastest way to do it. Yes. It's going to be local to the user and all that yep. stuff. So that will certainly be the fast. It's also one of the other considerations I have, which isn't the end of the world, but it's like there's not too many single points of failure in the way HelpSpot is currently architected. And mm -hmm. so even on the cloud side. And so having this like some big database ser or not database, some big servers running somewhere that are just doing this AI proxying stuff, like kind of becomes that. Obviously, you can like have load balancers and auto right. provisioning, whatever mm -hmm. all stuff. But like there is kind of becomes this another choke point. Whereas, like, yes, the workers are just like infinite and everywhere and whatever. Yes. Who even knows how they do it? But it's all Who knows? magic. Um, trust them. Yes, I do think. I mean, it certainly can be done in workers. But again, the more we get into like actual logic in there, I do have some concerns about it being yep. in the workers um, because I do think. Well, what are your thinks, thoughts about this? I mean, another aspect. I don't know how much AI stuff you've done. Very like, little. Sort of, yeah, but so here's a here's a one potential issue is like in our work with it so far there can be a fair amount of distinctions between what you prompt in one model versus another so okay. the prompts are going to change based on like the model we want to use um and yep. things like that and so it's not quite it's not like a pure writing task uh, where we might just say like write this better or whatever there okay. will be some of that but it's going to be more like hey take all this information and tell us what category this belongs in or give me some other type of answer in that sort of way and so the prompts mm -hmm. are a little more massaged in some some ways mm -hmm. so i've been thinking well maybe it's really that like none of that logic is really in the help spot code base like that's in this proxy layer you basically like call a function that does like a, a categorization Right. method on yep. the proxy layer service layer mm -hmm. and then that's where like the prompt stuff stays and so if there are like multiple implementations of it for different models like that's not then a bunch of stuff that helpspot needs to be aware of it's like helpspot just Correct. gets an answer right it just says right. hey yes this is the that's category. what you want here's what this request says you told me what category it belongs in do not look that's behind it. the curtain yes right i like, agree it's just black box from the help spot code perspective I, I and then the service layer does it. Mm -hmm. right so then when we get to that stuff it starts to get a little more like well if we did it in laravel like i know what's going on developers we have know what's going on if it's like a worker right. what's the best way to right. do that mm -hmm. you know, i don't know like obviously we could learn it so i guess that's where my worker story is a little like I, i'm a little scared of that but i also agree like it's probably gonna be the cheapest it's definitely gonna be cheapest, the fastest fastest um, easiest probably to implement because yeah, of their best ai player yeah yeah they have some cool ai stuff they do run some of the open source models and then they run this like gateway tool where like um like it'll cache for example like if you send it the mm -hmm. same exact prompt body it will just return the last result and i'm sure there's yep. settings for how long it caches that whatever but like so cost savings and things like that there's so we don't have to build our own caching layer for right. those type of things mm -hmm. um so yeah okay all right so we're on the there's, same page actually on both regards yeah. i have to say uh yeah. this, these are my two paths i've pretty much thought of other than fly fly um which I don't know. I'm a little like, you know, these like, it's, it's a little shaky. Pure BC I know. It's a, thing. it's a little like, shaky. If it goes away, I I'm agree. a little scared about that. So that part, but still, it's I the agree. same idea. Um, I want them to make it, but I don't know if they will. Yeah, you're never, you're never totally sure about that. So I've always played it ultra safe with like AWS. I would yep. feel ultra safe about Cloudflare. Um, One thing I would want to explore with the Cloudflare workers thing is mm. you could. I don't know what, I don't know if this would be useful to you at all, but I think there's something interesting here. You can have a worker talk to their D1 database, which is a SQLite database, right. mm -hmm. but then you can also talk to that D1 database from your Laravel application. And so that could mm -hmm. be like a shared state 
Um, right. So that you could like, let's say that you do change the prompt for one model. Maybe you store like a model prompt map in SQLite in, in their D1 database. Right. And then from the Laravel side, you could, you know, update it whenever you decide or whatever. I, I don't know yeah. what their yeah. use case is, but I yep. think there's something interesting about using their D1 as some sort of global shared state between a worker and some separate app somewhere. Yeah. But I don't know. And it's too slow. Like D1 is too slow to use as your full Laravel database. And so that's not it. Like that's not right. the answer. Yeah, um, but be... what what is a cool way to do something there? I haven't quite cracked that nut yet. Yeah. D1 is interesting to me. I always find like I have like sort of interesting use cases for it, but then I'm like, I don't, I don't totally know. Still, Same. I guess new and kind of, and I'm not, I don't really build on that stack currently. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's for a it little bit far away. I don't love that idea. It's obviously. artificially restricted. Like they have certain limits on the size of the database. Yeah. And because it's over HTTP, it's quite slow for like yeah. real, like request response stuff, but background jobs or whatever, I could, I could see it working relatively well. Yeah. The other thing, this is more of a business thing, but, and this is something I'm very unsure about right now is like how we end up charging for AI yeah. services. Like right now we have some AI stuff in HelpSpot, but it's more on like the agent writing end and translations and things. And it's just like people can add their own open AI key. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that's really going to work going forward. It's still like a small chance that we go with that option, but I just think it's, you know, it's just complicated for people to go and figure it out and sign up for open AI and all that stuff. Mm. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, my response to that is don't do that. You're right. It's too right. complicated. However, okay. here, yeah. I just had a thought. Yeah. I, wanted, thought. I wanted, you know, I wanted to acknowledge your last thought because I was definitely listening, but here's my thought. <laughs> yes. Give, um, me, give me. You talk about auth and tracking usage. That could be an interesting use case for a shared SQLite database, a shared D1 database. So mm. from the Laravel side, you're putting in you're putting in API keys into this D1 database that are allowed to do whatever. Then right. on the worker side, you're checking that D1 database, which is going to be lightning fast because it's mm. a worker to D1 and they're presumably right next to each other. Right. And then you could, so you're reading on the worker side, writing on the Laravel side. Yep. Then you could do, um, you could also increment hits. So like whenever somebody calls the API, the worker could increment the SQLite database to keep track of usage and yeah. then on the Laravel side and, you know, their centralized help scout admin area or whatever. Help spot. You can check. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I said. Help spot. Help spot. Uh, <laughs> Dave, Dave, edit that out. That's embarrassing. Uh, um, no, that's so from, from the help spot side, you could check the D1 database to gather up usage, statistics, billing, right. that sort of thing. And so that might be, that's kind of an interesting use case for it because the, yeah. write, the, the reads and writes from the worker would be super fast, which is what you need to check yep. off and increment usage. And then it'll be slow from the Laravel side, but it doesn't matter because it's a yeah. back office, it's a back office function at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't looked into too much like the D1, like how much it can handle in terms of like what if there's a lot of people, right? Like a lot of these AI requests going flying around and like right. um the right I mean I obviously we've been I think we feel pretty good about the like right speed of SQLite in the modern era. We do. Um especially on like a big beefy server, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true of how they run D1, like what its limitations mm -hmm. are. I haven't like looked into that in a while. Uh, it's also not the end of the world. I mean, it's sort of interesting. I don't, I've never really had this use case. Like HelpSpot doesn't have a lot of use cases where like, I don't care if something fails. Right. Uh, but this case is more like that, especially in like the logging end. It's like, well, whatever, if we miss, that somebody used a little bit of AI resources. Like, I don't actually care. Like, um, I'm not going to hold up the request for that. If there was like a delayed, right. Or something like right. I would just abandon yeah, it. Totally. And if it's like, who cares? Like, it's like 0 0.001 cent, whatever. Um, so yeah, like we, there could be different types of trade-offs than I'm normally used to making of like, doesn't necessarily have to be hundred percent perfect, which is sort of interesting. Um, I was looking at that. I think I tweeted about that, that time scale DB, which is like a mm -hmm. thing on Postgres. Um, where it kind of is built for this sort of thing of like logging a bunch of stuff and then having aggregates of usage, yep. um, which is kind of in, like, if we were just doing everything on AWS, that would be kind of interesting. So yeah, I don't know. There's a couple different options there, but I don't know. I like but it. All right. 
You're like on board it. with you're on board I'm with on board. The, hide, the, hide the, the messy plans. detail. So yeah. all the all the help spot applications send an API request that says respond, categorize, right. sentiment, and then that's it. That's all they know. Yeah. And then the service does all the messy stuff. And then even beyond the service, the AI does all the black the real black box stuff. Right. But yeah, hide hide that implementation detail from the clients such that you can just change it without having to roll out anything new to the client. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm, that's where I'm leaning. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way to go. And then, uh, cause this will like, it's definitely not going to be like a pure microservice where it's actually trying to be ultra micro. Cause I imagine mm -hmm. this as being a, having some other things potentially down the road in it as well beyond AI. But, um, so it does need to be, I don't know, that, that's the kind of thing that leads me more back towards it. So Laravel app mm -hmm. and we know how to build and run those and if it has to do other stuff someday that works together like i know mm -hmm. how to do that versus like it's yeah. in workers and do i have like a separate worker set up and how does that all work but workers are so appealing for this sort workers of workers are like so they, appealing yeah they do seem kind of magical so i might have to play with that a little bit and get a better feel for yeah. the worker side i think but it's pretty appealing yeah why can't cloud just a couple just a couple serverless bros just hanging out talking about serverless man <laughs> serverless. we love javascript we love serverless uh, but it's gotta be really fast that's why i didn't know if like lambda and all that stuff is like is it fast enough i feel like maybe it's not fast enough although people say it's very um, fast i think it would be fast enough you think so? I think you'd have enough requests that you'd have enough warm stuff you'd have to deploy it in multiple regions which is yeah. that's the problem with lambda Yes, that's tricky, right? That's what, kind of what I it recall about that as well. Yeah. It is tricky. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, the multiple regions. It's all real, yep. real SaaS and stuff here. It is real speed of light stuff going on here. Yeah. Speed of light. It's so annoying. It's crazy how we'll crack it one things. day. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. The quantum computers. I don't have to send anything anywhere. They can just figure it out before it gets sent. I know. They have the answer. Who knows what a quibit is, but that is gonna that's going to be the future. It's out there. That stuff, it's that stuff blows my mind. Yeah. There's some weird stuff. The out quantum there. entanglement. Yeah. I don't know if oh, I buy it. Dude, I don't know if I buy it. Don't know if I buy it. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. They claim that they've tested it, they but like, claim... how do you actually test this? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, don't, I can't even come up with a test that would that would verify that. Like how do you <laughs> you turn no you scientist? turn a little no, yeah, we turn a little freaking thing <laughs> on one side of the country, and you still are like, oh yeah, it turned at the same time on the other side of the country. But how do you yeah. know? But you can't how measure you know? it. And you all can't that measure stuff. it. You're yeah. on the phone. You're like, well, the phone goes through the speed of light. How do you know? You don't know. Yeah. Well, that's like the thing that always blows my mind. Even though it's not quite as crazy as quantum. Well, I mean, I guess it's somewhat related, but it's like you know the uh, the test of light where it's like it could be a wave or it could be a particle, just depending yeah. on how you measure it. It's like freaking guys don't know anything. So yeah. weird. Yeah. How does Figured that work? Out. Figure it out. How do, how do we not know? Wave or particle. Give me a break. A yeah. Mind. Well, good thing what we're simulations. Scientists. Simulations breaking down. It's like Man, we're getting too advanced. We got to talk about simulation theory at some point. Yeah. Not today, but we. we it's today. Great theory. What a great theory. <laughs> Crazy, ridiculous, but a great it theory. Is. I love that theory. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. All right. I think we'll leave it there. We'll be back next week for the update. I'm very excited for the update. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks for everybody for listening. Check us out at mostlytechnical.com, mostly tech pod on Twitter, and mostly technical podcast at gmail.com if you have any feedback. And we'll uh, see you next week. Thanks all. all. Right. See you. Bye.